You're watching Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right, so you're the proud owner of a 1993 80 series. Good four wheel drive. Under the bonnet though, you've got the 1FZF engine in it, which as we know is the four and a half litre carburetor six cylinder petrol engine. And uh, you've come to the realization you need more power, you need more torque, you need better fuel economy, and apparently lower maintenance costs. All but one of those ideas is true. Take a guess at which one isn't true. One of the best four-wheel drives ever made. Here at Backyard Tech, it's 80 Series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 Series time here at Backyard Tech for a Thursday and this comes off the back of a question from a viewer by the name of Outdoor Eng, who commented on a video from a year or two ago now I think and uh, needs a little bit of help. Now, right off the meat of the bat, I ain't showing this viewer how it's done. We'll go out to my 80 series soon and I'll explain it all, but let's, let's get the groundwork out of the road first. You have the 1FZF engine and the 1FZFE engine. The really only two differences are between the injection, the EFI, so electronic fuel injection and carby, and your power torque ratings between the two motors. Now, the know-it-all experts, you won't want to watch this because you'll know this right down to the bore stroke, freaking compression ratios, the whole kit and caboodle. But for those that may not know, which will only be about three of you, there are some differences between the two engines. Not in capacity specs, but in output specs. Now, I've got to do this off the 1FZF engine, which for memory, and I, I, I haven't done a lot of work on the carburetor engine so I've got to do it from memory the 1FZF engine had a had 188 horsepower at it was about 42 or 4400 rpm with 360 362 or 363 odd newton meters of torque at a about 3200 rpm okay with me okay with my engine which is the 1fzfe it's 212 horses at 4600 rpm and 373 newton meters of torque at 3400 rpm okay so 200 extra rpm gives you 10 more newton meters of torque and 200 rpm gives you 26 more horsepower in difference between the two motors compression ratio is exactly the same 9.0 to 1 but then again all you know and all experts out there all know that anyway now this viewer outdoor range wants to know how to convert the 1fzf engine into an injected model well i can tell you now i ain't showing you how it's done my viewers know my disclaimer. Therefore, I'm not showing you how it's done. Even with my confidence level under the bonnet of a vehicle, and considering even I have looked after the majority of my own vehicles, I wouldn't even do this myself. The old adage, you break it, you bought it, comes into play something severe. So, I have two pieces of advice for that viewer. If they want to go from the carburetor model to an injected model. My first piece of advice would be to go and find, okay, source a completely fully reconditioned, so a total bolts up rebuild of a 1FZFE, including the ECU, the wiring harness slash loom, the whole kit and caboodle. Go and source that then take it to and mind you all this involves a fully qualified 
highly reputable mechanic. Okay, so the first piece of advice would be either you find it or take your 80 series to a mechanic, again, fully reputable, fully qualified, fully licensed. I don't know where this viewer lives, by the way, so I'm not sure where they live and get them to source it. And it needs to be a completely fully reconditioned. So a total bolts up rebuild from the bottom of the oil sump to the top of the motor. All right, full rebuild, including the ECU, including everything you need, the harness, the distributor, the whole lot, pre-igniter, ignition coils, everything. Okay, do that. Maybe even find a 100 series engine so that instead of having a distributor and coil, you've got coil pack, okay? Whatever, it'll bolt in. All right, that's your first option. Your second option is to take it again to a fully qualified, highly reputable EFI specialist and get them to do it, okay? I'm not going to in any way, shape or form show this viewer how it's done. No way. For this viewer Outdoor Inge, my longtime viewers know my disclaimer. So you need to take that into account. All right. Now, this is going to be a lengthy video, guys. So if you don't want to watch the whole video, don't. When you do convert from carburetor to EFI, yes, you get better economy. You get more power. You get more torque but you don't get less maintenance per se. You're sh simply shifting your maintenance platform from maintaining a carburetor setup to maintaining an EFI setup. Instantaneously, you are introducing electronics. You've got to have injectors, fuel roll, higher fuel pressure, okay? Mass block adjustment, dizzy adjustment, rotor button, leads, coil, everything essentially changes. The idea that you reduce your maintenance costs with EFI is not really true. All you're doing is shifting your maintenance focus because you start having to deal with electronics, which means you can get gremlins. I've had gremlins. Most of them have been ironed out now, but I've had them. Electronic gremlins with the motor, the ECU. The other thing is, this viewer didn't tell me what their trans is, so I don't know if they're running manual, one of the two hydraulics, or the electronic auto. Okay? If you're running the electronic auto, you need an ECU with the TCU interface. You've got it. Um, it's not as simple to go from carburetor to EFI. It's actually fairly easy to go the opposite direction. As I said, you are going to get more power. 20, sorry, 24, uh, no, that's not right. 188, yeah, 24 more horsepower over 200 revs and 10 more Newton meters of torque over 200 revs. And that can make a, a, a difference too in some cases. That's just the engine. You lose 20% through the drivetrain. Now, not knowing whether or not this 80 is the update model, Exhibit A, Your Honour, or the pre-update model, they gave me no information other than the 1993 80 series. Fantastic. You know, is it R12? Is it R1348? There's a big difference. Um, you know, there's a myriad of things. Now, I actually haven't worked on a 1FZF motor. As we know, the 1FZ replaces the old 3F engines the old four liters. So the 3FE and the 3F. The 3F being a four liter carburetor, the 3FE being the injected. Okay. Both the 1FZF engines use narrow angle double overhead cams as we're all very well aware. And I know this, so everyone knows that we all know that. Um, the bore and stroke doesn't change, the compression ratio doesn't change, it's mainly the injection system, but also the ignition system's got to change too. So to this viewer, Outdoor Eng, I ain't showing you how to do it. And to be brutally honest, I probably wouldn't do it myself. I would take it to someone. 
But you've got to remember, if you get someone to do it, it's on their head if they break it. Now, if you go ahead and do your own conversion and you happen to break an injector or you get something back to front, what do you do? It could cost you the same, if not more, to get it fixed again. And then if you completely botch it up, you've paid all your own parts, you've tried to fit it yourself, you've got to take it down to a mechanic and get them to do it, it could cost you more. Is it really worth the risk doing it yourself? In my mind, no. There's a lot that's got to be changed. And the thing is, you are inducing, and this is what I think some people have a vague foggy idea of is that if you do convert from carby to efi you're going to reduce your maintenance costs technically they don't reduce okay you're still doing oil you're still doing water you have fuel filters um what you're inducing is electronics and if you're not really good with electronics you're going to struggle Look how many electrical gremlins I've had to iron out in my 80. Quite a few. With nearly 400,000 on the clock, and that's kilometres. Right off the meat of the bat, I can't do it in miles, so the know it all experts will now howl on me for not doing a full miles convert, actually. Hold on. Let me do it to miles to avoid being howled on for not having the exact conversion here. I will do it to miles an hour because otherwise people will get cranky. So it's got, she's basically got near enough damn it to 375,000 kilometers on the clock. Let me do the conversion here, guys, because otherwise I'll get into trouble from everybody. She's got about 233,000 miles on her. All right. It's funny, people seem to think that I work in Imperial some imperial measurements i know but so 375,000 odd kilometers or 233,000 odd miles okay and you do get gremlins okay and anyone who says you don't get any gremlins in an efi system is an idiot they're dumber than me now to this viewer outdoor eng i'm not showing you how to do it for the reasons stated in my disclaimer. And my advice is, get someone to do it, but make sure they are reputable, they are fully qualified and fully insured. That way, if they stuff it up, it ain't on your head financially. The 1FZFE engine, and I have seen them on sale, including the ECU and uh, the harness, here in Australia for around, and I say around, about 3,000 Australian dollars. Okay. I have no idea, no idea where this, this viewer lives. They didn't tell me. So I, I can't do the unit conversion for currency. Seems like these days I've got to convert everything so everyone understands. Um, now, the other thing too that you've got to remember when you're going from a carburetor to an EFI, you're going from mechanical injection, which can sometimes be easier to find a problem, to electronic fuel injection, which sometimes can be more problematic. Fuel rail, injectors could have an ECU error, timing error, mass block error, O2 error. There's a myriad of other errors you induce. So if the viewer wants to go to EFI, you need to take into account that yes, you're gonna gain fuel economy, power, and torque. That's right, you will. Especially if you go and do a full engine change to a 1FZFE. All right, you are gonna get better fuel economy, better torque, better power, but you are not gonna reduce your maintenance costs. Your maintenance costs pretty much stay the same. What you've gotta be aware of is you're inducing electronics into an injection system, which means you run the risk of gremlins. Okay. Um, to be brutally honest, even with my confidence on my vehicles over the years, 
if I was going to convert any of my carburetor engine vehicles I've had to EFI, and this doesn't matter whether you're talking petrol or liquid petroleum gas injection, LPI, okay, I would get someone to do it. And the reason being is it's on their head if they break it, not yours, okay? Let me grab the video camera and we'll go out to the 80 series. All right, so excuse the wind noise guys because it is very windy out here today and there's not much I can do about that. So, converting the 1FZF engine to a 1FZFE engine. So, ignore the EFI manifold there and you put a carburetor on top. And you can see there's more electronics to do with EFI than there is to do with a carby. Alright. Now, you've obviously got manifold, injection rail, injectors, all of that. Alright. You've got more vacuum hoses. You've obviously got O2 sensor, idle sensors, all that type of stuff. Okay. It's not as simple going from carby to EFI. And as I said, my advice to this viewer, Outdoor Eng, is to get a 1FZFE fully reconditioned. It's short-term pain in the back pocket, but you will reap the benefits in the long run of getting a complete system, rather than just going out and converting it. But if you're happy with the engine other than the injection system, then get a fully reputable EFI company to do the conversion for you. Right. Under no circumstances am I going to show this viewer how it's done. I have a vague idea how it's done. Alright. It's no, I'm not even I'm not even going to go through that down that route. Okay, I'm not going to go down that route. So, having said that. Because you've also got to have your carbon system's got to be changed on it if it's got it at all. Um, you've got fuel rails, more electronics, um, obviously the dizzy as well. Um, even if the dizzy is electronically controlled for the carburetor, you're going to have to remap it for EFI, assuming you've got a fully fledged ECU that's capable of doing EFI, so you've got to remap it. I'm possibly wrong on this because I can't actually totally remember but I think the timing for well the timing for this I think is actually 5 uh, BD BTDC okay I think it's different on the carby I think the carby is 6 or 7 BD, BD, BTDC I'm not really familiar with the carburetor engine of this other than the fact that I know the bore and stroke are the same and so is the compression ratio I think the timing's different between the carburetor system and the EFI system I think I'm not don't quote me on that okay so you got to get that all changed you got to get all this changed out um, You'd probably have to mod your dipstick where that gets mapped to. Um, power steering's probably mounted somewhere differently. I'm not overly familiar with how the, the 1FZF engine is laid out. Mainly because I've never dealt with it. Okay. So, um, also your fuel filter, inline fuel filter's got to be changed. You've got to boost your fuel pressure going through the system for the injectors. Uh, all that type of stuff. And there's a lot more electronics, okay? Um, it's not... You've got to weigh up, when you're doing this sort of stuff, you've got to weigh up your um, conversion costs, okay? But as I said, my advice would be to get someone to do it. Don't do it yourself. And I am in un under no circumstances going to show you how it's done. What you are going to do with an EFI system, though, is throttle body cleaning. You've got to keep that up. Air intake hose. 
I don't know whether the carburetor engine has the mass block. Okay, over there. I don't know. I presume it does, all right? Throttle and throttle lock have got to be adjusted. Water hoses have got to be adjusted you know, or changed. A um, couple of the vacuum valves, the idle system, as I said, probably the carbon canister's got to be changed. Uh, the dizzy, because remember, these are narrow angle camshafts, okay? Um, whether the dizzy's got to be changed, I'm unsure, okay? Rotor button might have to be, so might the HT leads again, I'm not overly sure. So it's not just as simple as what it looks like, where you just rip the car off, slap an EFI kit on it, and away you go. There's a lot more involved. Not to mention your ECU. So outdoor range, my advice to you, right off the meat of the bat, in the dead set fed income department, take your car to a mechanic and get them to source for you a fully fledged, total bolts up rebuild, completely reconditioned 1FZFE with the associated wiring harness slash loom, the associated ECU, depending on your transmission. Okay? Or take your existing system to an EFI specialist, again, fully qualified, fully reputable ins and insured, and get them to do the conversion for you. Okay? If you want to do it yourself, I'm sorry to say this, don't come to me because I'm not showing anyone how to do it. Alright? As I said, my long time viewers know my disclaimer. Alright? So. If I was in Outdoor Engine's case, and I had the carburetor, even with my knowledge of everything under here, I would still take it to a specific mechanic or EFI people and get them to do it, without a problem. I'd have no, no qualms. Your only other option really would be, wait for that motorbike to go past. Your only other option really would be to do a diesel conversion if you really want to improve your fuel economy and torque and reduce your power output. But if you want to stay with petrol, okay, get someone to do it, all right? That's my advice, all right? Now, now we've got through that, we'll do a bit of a bonus for people. I know some of my viewers like this, one viewer in particular, whoops, who likes to see this. And uh, we will do this just for, uh, actually no, two of my viewers like this, so only two of them. <laughs> so what we will do, whoops, it's, oh they've got the radio on, hang on a minute, that could have been ugly. Alright, now just before we do this, if this viewer has the electronic auto, and you are going to do a full 1FZFE uh, conversion, so you're going to go out and get an engine. Make sure the ECU has got the interface for the electronic auto, because you'll end up with the electronic kick down. Alright? So we'll do this. This is for my fans of this thing starting. And that, the two viewers who like that will be very happy I did that for them. So, there we go. Anyway, guys, that is it. Um, that's all I'm going to do for this AD Series video uh, regarding converting from carburetor to, uh, to EFI. And uh, essentially, that is basically it. There we are, guys. Have a good one.